All right, St. Louis, once again, Bill Clevelin is not in the studio. He is on the road. Uh, I'm joined in studio by two guests this evening from Superheroines Etc. And that is a .org, so you know it's a big deal. We have in the studio Carolyn and Marissa. And ladies, thank you very much for coming in. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, we're Absolutely. excited. Good, good, good. Well, th- that'll diminish by the end of the day, believe me. <laughs> You're like, why do we do this? So um, explain a little bit about your organization, if you would. Well, Superheroines Etc. is a nonprofit organization, and it's our mission to empower women to kind of embrace their inner nerdiness. So whatever that might be to someone, whether that's history or reading or comic books or television, um, and we do that through a number of member-driven events. So we ask our members to recommend things or host events, and we do about 200 of those events a year. And I met you at the Wizard World. Uh, St. Louis was in town a month ago, and I went to your panel. It was very informative, very uh, very fun panel, I think. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, I enjoyed it quite a bit, and um, it seems like everyone else did too. And there were uh, a number of you up there, and... Talk about a little bit, I saw on your website, you have different chapters. So you are from the St. Louis chapter. Um, is there a, like, a, what's the overall organization, or is there a requirement to be a chapter of the organization? Well, uh, we we say St. Louis chapter kind of as a hopeful thing. We oh, okay. are uh, We started here in St. Louis, but we are hoping to expand within the next year. So we're encouraging folks to check out our website and uh, put in a sort of application to see if they want to start one up in another city and for those that are interested it's a it's a pretty painless process and we'll walk you through the whole thing lots of hand holding so that we make sure that you get to where you need to be cool very neat so st louis is is a technically the first one then so actually yes oh okay i had no i see I, I looked at the website and it originally you said you changed names on the website so i thought maybe it was like a had already expanded out but that's cool i've got the inaugural group in here with me <laughs> Right. It's like hanging out with the original X Men. This is fantastic. Uh, I like being compared to the X Men. Yeah. Right. Who wouldn't? <laughs> so, what? Um, how many people are in, in the uh, the chapter as of right now? We have a little over fourteen hundred at this nice. moment here, Where? just in St. Louis. Wow. It has exploded. I sometimes feel like I'm on a runaway train, but in a very awesome way. Yeah. Yeah, in St. Louis, right. not in the studio. They're not waiting out back. <laughs> they're not here. We've never all been in one place at one time. Uh-huh. But that would be really great. It would be awesome. Is like a chain of command. Like, you know, you can't have the president and his cabinet and the vice president. <laughs> you have to kind of spread yourselves out throughout the city. Is that one of those? Uh, maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so what's, um, you did Wizard World, obviously. What are some of the other events that um, you guys have going on? Oh, well, that's a good question for me. I'm the event host coordinator okay. for Super Heroines, et cetera. Um, as Carolyn said, you can be nerdy about anything, which I love. You know, if somebody's going to – I feel that being a nerd about something means that you would talk to a stranger about it excitedly and, uh, you know, accidentally, you know, drone on for five minutes about <laughs> – for me, that would be about bees or, you know, British literature, pop culture, baking, America's Test Kitchen. So um, I focus my events that I host personally off of things that I like in the hopes that other people would be as passionate about the events that I am too. So – um Let's see. I can't think of anything offhand uh, without my notes, but I know that um, we try to foster a community. So we have events for new members. Um, at the beginning of July, we're having an event um, for, uh, I'm calling it New Friends and Froyo or something with a you Friends and Froyo. Froyo. <laughs> yeah. I like the alliteration Friends and Froyo. So we're doing something like that. But also um, lectures. Um, we try to make them learning based, but also add a spin of community and being able to socialize because we all have professional lives. So we should be able to um, enjoy each other's company as well. Mm-hmm. So um, we have that going on. And- uh, some of the, the upcoming events that pretty much anyone can drop in on. Uh, we have a donation based yoga class coming up next weekend. Um, we do a monthly event called She in the Pub. And basically, that's people with really interesting, cool ideas coming and talking to us while we're enjoying a beer and a little dinner. Uh, so we're we're focusing on uh, community cookbooks next time, hmm. which is really an interesting topic. And then in August, uh, we're going to be doing a program with Nerd for a Living, which is a really cool local uh, kind of career-oriented organization. And they're going to be talking about leveling up your uh, professional and personal life. So they have a really neat spin on it. I'm I'm really excited about that event, actually. Yeah. 
I've been waiting to meet them for a long time, so I probably will scare them with my enthusiasm. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm ready to meet them, and I want. It, I sometimes feel like I could use a little direction professionally. So if they could see a different way to use my superpowers, if you will, for a different career or um, you know as a career enhancement or leveling up, I would definitely be interested in hearing that. So super excited about that, and I. Hope I can like put a cap on the enthusiasm at least a little bit. I'm gonna dial it down just maybe about an eight. <laughs> it's turned so up to eleven more. right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Enthusiasm is, is to be commended. I think. Now, I think they had a panel at Wizard World as well. They did uh, yes. about, and they had uh, a person who I guess he'd started out designing like just making things, and it turned out he's now working in movies, designing props for movies and things like that. So there's uh, to that element. People think, oh, you're a geek, you read comic books, or oh, you do this. There's, as you pointed out, there's a lot to be done. You can always take that and, like, the things that level up, uh, there's there's a lot to be done out there. And I think we're seeing a renaissance of geekdom uh, with all the movies and TV shows. And uh, it, it's, it's a huge business, obviously. Uh, Wizard World added, they were telling me, I think, four new cities for the upcoming year. So, Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. it's uh, There's a lot going on. So I think that's, that's uh, we may have to have you back on after you go to the <laughs> oh, workshop. Yeah, and. Let us know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So in addition, like you said, to comic books, what about, um, like, do you have video gamers? Do you guys have gaming nights and things like that? We or? do. We mm-hmm. do. There are some meetup groups in St. Louis that focus on board games, but we do have a monthly board game night just for um, Super Heroine, et cetera, members, you know, so they can, uh, one of our core philosophies is that they can meet with other women. Men are welcome, but it is female-based group or a women's focus group. Um, you know, so they can have a safe place to play games and not have to be harassed because those are things that some women do deal with in in uh, places where it's a, more of a male dominated or a male focused area. And so we offer that for women who want to learn a new game. It's called Learn a New Game Night. We do that once a month, so that's pretty cool. But occasionally we do pair up with a board game meetup group in St. Louis as well. We haven't done that in a while, and I do think that's something that we need to revisit. But I know Fantasy Shop and Newcastle Comics, they always have gaming things at their facilities. Do you usually have those at a facility or just in one of the members' homes, or where do you? We uh, we work with Game Night, which okay. is a local, group, or a local business. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And where are they located? They are Ooh. off Watson. Watson, okay. Yeah, kind of in the Webster Groves area. Okay. And uh, if we want to give a shout out to the Wizard's Wagon, we also work with them occasionally, too. Oh, yeah. Um, Great place. We have a good relationship with them, and they actually just got a new space above their shop which is perfect for game events so i would recommend everybody checking that out as well that's right there in the del mar loop uh just down the street from the tivoli if i'm not mistaken absolutely yeah very yeah it's a really cool shop well we are visiting with uh carolyn and marissa from superheroines etc we are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back if you have any questions that you'd like to ask the numbers are 314-969-KTRS or 888-550-KTRS KTRS, if you're calling from outside the listening area. And as always, Star KTRS from your cell phone will get you right through. We're going to play some of your favorite commercials coming up. And when we get back from break, we'll have more with our guests right after this. And we are back live in studio. And uh, the women definitely outnumber the men tonight for a change. <laughs> Nicole's here with me, of course. And we are joined by our guests from Superheroines, etc. We have Carolyn and Marissa. And we were talking during the break, um, something that never really occurred to me, having been reading comic books since I was in sixth grade, that kind of, uh, especially now, I realize there are a lot of comic book choices out there. But Marissa, you were talking about having that class comic book one-on-one that someone's doing because they're as a person not knowing anything to go in it can be kind of intimidating yes comic book stores are intimidating at least to me and it turns out there are other women who feel the same way i have been into a comic book store um with a male friend and he knew what he wanted because it was new issue day so he was wandering around and taking a look and i asked a question um you know and just kind of got uh the feeling that i wasn't welcomed And then when I got the um, answer that I was seeking, it was explained in such a way that was dumbed down. Um, You know, we have a term for that called mansplaining. Mm. And uh, I was offended. And, of course, then, um, you know, money is power and voting. And so I thought, well, I'm not going to, you know, vote for you, per se, and uh, spend any money here. So I didn't. But also I didn't get any knowledge. I didn't really get what I wanted, which was a comic to start with. Yeah. Um, And up until, you know, now, up until last week, I hadn't purchased my first comic 
Uh, so I did buy my first comic last week at the Wizard's Wagon, which now they're selling those, which is great. But I asked a question. Um, you know, I saw a comic that I heard about online, and uh, the artwork definitely caught my eye. Uh, so I bought Fight Club 2, and uh, the artwork by David Mack is what caught my eye. And I'm really excited about it. The first the first issue was really good, and the next one comes out next week, so I can't wait. But, I, you know, back to the original question, uh, Comics Book 101, I'm really excited about that so I can go in and maybe find something more aside from Fight Club 2 to uh, experience. And, yeah. Um, you know, there are a fair amount of people who have signed up. I think so far we have uh, 16 people going. Cool. Yeah. Very neat. And, you know, that's a Sunday evening when you're supposed to be in your pajamas watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> exactly. <Right. laughs> and that, these are all people who, like you, kind of want to ha- start getting into comic books? Or are you any of the 16 people going? Do you know any, any of them who are coming who are like, oh, I just want to kind of go to for the camaraderie and interaction? Um, I'm sure there's probably a mix, but I'm yeah. guessing the majority – are for, um, you know, people who are new and want to try it out. It's hard not to be curious about something that somebody else is ex- enthusiastic about. So, uh, you know, we had a, an event earlier this year where we talked heavily about comics, going to Comic-Con, um, you know, online presence of comics and, you know, new new things that are happening in comics, you know, with artwork and um, women's issues. And I got very interested, but also I really didn't know where to start because it seems like that's such a new world that I was very overwhelmed. Mm. So I'm happy that my friend Amy stepped up and said that she would host this event for us and, uh, you know, give me the opportunity to participate as um, just a regular member instead of a leader so I can kind of learn and get my needs met, you know, as far as my curiosity is concerned. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, and all the, the the digital comics and everything, that's one of the things I've never got into, but there's just so much information out there now about comic books. And Nikki is my one ally. Bill have, will have nothing to do with <laughs> the comic books. We've got him into walking or watching Walking Dead now, finally. Right. But she's usually the person who's like, oh, well, this, and she watches some of the shows I do. So mm-hmm. Nikki might uh, be having to attend your event to kind of help. That would be, I could see where that would be helpful because when I take my son to the comic book store, I don't know where to start. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, well, you know, I just kind of look at this and look at that. And, you know, I don't even know what I'm looking at or, you know. Your own son doesn't even help you? No. He goes, <laughs> you know, he does his own thing. Oh, my goodness. You know? Well, you pick it up and it says issue number 14. Uh-huh. Right. So you're like. Volume what? three, issue number 14. Like, well, what do I do? Yeah. You don't even see number one, issue one. And then you're like, well, I don't want to seem stupid and ask for that. And they're like, oh, well, no one's seen that. You can only get it on eBay and it costs a million dollars. Yeah. If you're looking for, uh, luckily, if you want Avengers number one, I think there's like eight volumes of Avengers Marvel <laughs> comics. Don't get me started on what they're doing. But uh, yeah, it, it is quite overwhelming, yeah, uh, certainly, to have to deal with anything like that. Now, Carolyn, you're not into comic books at all? Or is oh, that I'm not totally your... into You are, okay. Books. Yeah, I actually started. Um... I really got into kind of continuing television series through comic books. So like the Buffy. Buffy, comic. yes. Oh, Buffy season eight, I guess it was. Yeah. Season yeah. Eight. They have season nine. I haven't quite. I actually, my fiance got me the like table, coffee book table size. Oh, cool. Books nice. The omnibus. Yes. It's very impressive uh, sitting on my bookshelf. <laughs> and uh, so I kind of started with uh, like Jericho and Firefly continuation. Oh, comics. Firefly. Yes. Oh, so good. <laughs> Um, so I actually watched Firefly when it was on air with my dad. That was something we did when I was in mm-hmm. like, middle school. And I kind of honored. And like cause <laughs> other people were like, oh, I found that like 10 years later. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm like totally out of the curve. No kidding. Um, but, I before was cool. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but yeah, I'm totally into the TV continuations. But then I also found fables. And I'm really interested in sort of... Um, turning fairy tales on their head type show. So actually I'm really into once upon a time, even though it's a little cheese tastic. I love cheese. So all about that. (laughs) My wife and I tried so hard. We we watched the first season and we got like a third of the way through the second season. We're like, we just can't do it. We're getting diabetes. It's so sweet. It's just, uh, so we had to, we had to switch. Yeah. It is a little sickeningly sweet, but, um, fables is actually much darker Mm. than once upon a time. So you get into these characters that are very, uh, troubled or, uh, very dark and uh, see their histories and their stories in really new new light and they're also in like modern day new york city so hmm. trying to hide that kind of x-men style you know hiding who they really are hmm. this is why i love our group because i have not heard of fables 
Now I can ask her where I can watch it. See, there you go. Where can I watch Fables? Well, it's a it's a comic book. Oh, so I actually, mis- you can borrow all of mine because I, I almost see. Have that's them all. awesome. <laughs> see? That, this is what we're all about right here. <laughs> now you said uh, interestingly too the range of your uh, the age range of your group because people think you know like you were talking earlier you changed the one of the reasons you changed the name is because people thought you were for younger mm-hmm. girls but you said you've got some women in their 60s uh so there's not any kind of age limit who can be in the group or anything like that at all anybody can be a nerd yeah exactly mm-hmm. yeah i think the only the only thing we ask if you want to bring your your child uh anyone who's like under 18 you know we just ask that you you accompany them sure uh, cuz yeah i mean most of our programs are designed for adult women but uh, I think teenagers can really benefit from the stuff that we do too. Yeah. Agreed. It's a, it's already formed community. And sometimes whenever you're in a space where you can't find somebody who likes the things that you like, or, um, you know, you're being ridiculed or made fun of, or you just feel out of place. It's nice to be able to find a group that, you know, likes that thing. You're mm-hmm. going to an event specifically for geocaching. So, you know, that those women are going to be interested in, you know, hunting around and, you know, solving puzzles and looking for clues. So, It's not like you're going to feel out of place. It's already established that you like, you have one thing in common, so you can talk about this one thing. Right. And enjoy something together. And so with the events, do you guys have a total, like, all of your groups are always, or all the people are always involved, or is it we'll have one night for, you know, this related topic, one night for this, and there's, like, micro communities within your overall 1,400 member I would say we have micro communities for sure. Yeah, I think there are people who who turn out for certain certain types of events, or um, you know, there are a lot of folks who like to come to our dinners out, and mm-hmm. you know, we've we've done some themed ones where you know, like Harry Potter. Oh, dinner, how much fun! You know that kind of thing. <laughs> I'm waiting I've, for my Hogwarts acceptance letter. <laughs> <laughs> people will get dressed up, which is kind of fun. You go to a restaurant wearing you know your like full Harry Potter robes, but um, how, how do they let the owls in? Because usually it's a health code violation. <laughs> I don't think that would work out too well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the owls know where to go. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, but I, I think also people feel like they can learn something new. So even if they're not normally the comic book type or they're not really into whatever topic we're talking about at our She in the Pub, a lot of times they'll just show up because it's something they want to learn about and, and uh, develop a skill in. Uh, we're all about, like I said, I think Marissa said, uh, education. Mm-hmm. So... People will come because they don't know right. and they want to know. Mm. And it's a safe place to ask questions and learn from each other, which is really important to me and our group philosophy in general. So it's 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 great because it's something for people who already have a common interest and at the same time, people who want to learn about a new interest. So it's really, I mean, you've got a nice synergy going on, it sounds like, uh, in the group already. Definitely. And I think the most inspiring thing about it is our members are really willing to share of themselves. So if someone knows how to knit they're totally open to teaching uh, anyone in the group how to knit. Mm. Uh, if they're into comics, they're willing to teach you how to go into a comic book store. Um, it, it's so awesome to have women sharing those skills with other women. Very neat. And you guys have movie nights, stuff like that too? Definitely. We actually have one coming up in August, on August 25th uh, at 6.30. We're going to be at the Mid-County Library branch. Uh, we're going to be watching the uh, Fantastic Four from, I believe, 2005. Okay. And kind of, and, and <laughs> it's about the same time that the new Fantastic Four is coming out. Uh, so we're going to be thinking about, you know, hopefully some folks will have seen that by then because I think this is coming, we're doing this event after the new movie comes out. So kind of doing a compare and contrast, you know, why would we make a movie 10 years later? <laughs> and what what is really Why changed? are they making a movie? That, don't get me started. That, that, that new Fantastic Four, man. Oh. They can because they can. Yeah. And they'll I take just, our money. That's yeah, really what well, it's about. I, you know, Nikki will attest. I've gone on <laughs> rants about that new Fantastic Four movie. Oh, my goodness. Fantastic fail. But we'll, right. we'll, we'll delve off that topic. We won't touch it. We're going to take another quick break. And we'll be back once more with the ladies from Superheroines Etc. And then if you want to go to their website, superheroinesetc.org, you can check it out there. Got all their info online. We'll be back. Uh, we've got a request from Bob in St. Clair. We're going to play that Callier Thompson spot you wanted. So hang tight. We'll be right back. This is the Big 550 KTRS. I don't care. I'm still free. You can take the sky from me. And at Carolyn's request, we are coming back with the Firefly theme song. It's making me really happy. For our return music. <laughs> Nikki, have you seen Firefly? No. I think it's on Netflix. If you get a chance to watch Firefly, it's it's like 13 episodes uh-huh. and one movie at the end, Serenity. Don't watch that. 
No? No, I'm you should I'm totally kidding. watch Serenity. I was going to say, I'm what's kidding. wrong with Serenity? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Is it because that one guy, I don't No, don't give me spoilers. That's why no I didn't want to say. I didn't say I said that no. one guy, so she has no idea. She probably would forget the name of it by the time. So Firefly? Firefly, yes. yeah. Okay. On Netflix. So good. So good. It will change your life. It's really good. Cool. <laughs> it's... Now, can I read this in comic books? They have comic books that take place. I don't think there are any of the prequels. I think that's all after it's Serenity. It's all sequels. Yeah. Serenity, yeah. yeah. Okay. So after the movie's over, they picked up a comic book run. Okay. Of, uh, from it. But yeah, it's it's so good. So it's it was a movie first, and then it turned into a comic book. Strike that, reverse it. That was so okay. <laughs> TV show, movie, comic book. Okay. Yeah. 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 But uh, very good. Very good. And that was uh, the Firefly theme song right there. We were talking about that uh, during our last segment. And some of the things I know the ladies wanted to bring up, a couple other uh, things. Carolyn wanted to talk about the website. Yeah, so we just launched our new website, and um, it's really dynamic. You can actually join the group online. Um, and we are we have forums, we have groups, we have all sorts of opportunities to really connect with basically anyone from across the country. So we're really trying to encourage folks who maybe live in rural communities or uh, basically anywhere outside of St. Louis where they don't have this group to uh, join online and uh, check out all the cool things we're going to have to offer. Uh, I want to start a young adult uh, novel sort of online book club, and we're planning on having some webinars and things. So it'll really be interactive. And that's cool because that will actually tie right into we have a caller on the line. Ivan had a question about membership in uh, other areas. Ivan, can you hear us? Yeah, yes, I can. What was your question for the ladies uh, yeah, my question was uh, where, where uh, if if it was the if I could join or if I if uh, if somebody else wanted to join in uh, a different area, say California, or uh, maybe the Orange County area, and uh, where where like how would I go about that, and uh, if it was at all possible? Marissa, you want to take that one? Yes, I will. Um, right now, we have one main mother chapter in St. Louis with the opportunity for other uh, people to take the lead and start chapters. In other places, and again, that would be a full, you know, fully supported, you know, walk you through the whole process. But if you're not really interested in, you know, taking that leadership opportunity and starting another group somewhere else, you can just join our online community. Um, you get 30 days for free, and then uh, you can poke around and see if it's a good fit for you, and then, uh, you know, try it out, which is good. And then if you decide that that's going to be fit for you, then you can. Um, join, you know, at, on an annual basis. And then if you find yourself in St. Louis, come to some events and uh, join our community and see what we're up to. What a great answer, I think. Uh, also, I just wanted to, I got another quick question. Uh, do you sure. know who's going to be Lex Luthor and Batman's first Superman coming up? Then know who is going to be the actor? Just curious. We're not allowed to tell you that. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I, I could tell you, but now I'm getting looks from all three women. I'm not sure if I should. <laughs> I don't know if I can, Ivan. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, I just well, I wanted to say hello. This is my uh, this is I I'm Ivan uh, Mercer's brother. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hi. How are you? Thanks I, for calling uh, in. Also, just uh, want to say I love it. Like, oh, I love you too, Ivan. Aww. Thanks for calling in. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Have a great night, Ivan. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. All right. That was cool. Little Aww. little uh, family love there. <laughs> I do. I love my little brother very now, much. <laughs> Now, I've got to bring it up, since you talked about it before we started the show. Is he the one who used to steal his X-Men comics and read? Oh, I did. Uh, yeah. now, now you get to hear about it, Ivan, as an adult. <laughs> um, no, he would, leave the comics, he would leave the X-Men comics around the house, namely in the bathroom. Mm. And uh, I would take them and secretly read them. And occasionally he would get upset that they were missing. Um, and it was because I was really interested in the X-Men. And actually, that was the one cartoon show that oh, um, yes. all four of us could agree on. And then after that, all bets were off. And <laughs> arguing would in, you know, ensue because I didn't like Looney Tunes, and they did. Um, but that was kind of a bonding thing for me and my siblings is that we all really liked X-Men. So the show started at 1030. I still remember that mm -hmm. 10, you know, 1030 to 11, there was peace. <laughs> <laughs> for that half hour your parents could relax yeah. right and then um you know after that it was a little rough but i you know i kind of grew my love to men i still love them very much um you know and and i wanted to get more into comics but also it definitely felt like it was my brother's thing so um i was interested but i really didn't know what to do about it so i'm i'm glad they have the opportunity tomorrow especially at comics 101 and uh to be a part of super heroines etc so that i can try uh, you know, comics as an adult, and you know, I feel like that's an okay hobby, and I have the opportunity now to poke around and find something that's for me. 
and especially the the uh, the X Men, their theme of you know not feeling like you fit in with society, kind of ties in to what you ladies are doing with your group. Actually, kind of people who kind of feel like, well, I'm not sure if this is something for me. They can come in, see if it's for them. You've got the the comic book uh, thing you had coming up, and all the other opportunities for interaction you have. I think it's a uh, a nice dynamic uh, between the all the different activities you have yeah there's some there are some other activities too that are new that you know we pilot i like to call it um incubation period where we'll do it once and then revisit the idea behind the scenes as a group talk about what worked and what didn't um things that are working right now we have transplant coffee dates so if you're new to the st louis area and you want to make friends it's hard to make friends once you're away from the education environment or maybe make friends outside of your office or Mm -hmm. whatever it takes up the majority of your time and you're new to St. Louis, then I would recommend the transplant uh, coffee. We also have um, Generation X and Beyond coffee dates. So if you're a little older, but you still feel like you're nerdy at heart and you want to be <laughs> nerdy with other people, your age group, we have that. Um, we also have something called Craft and Crab. So if you are, and actually this is my first Craft and Crab coming up this month. I've never attended, so I'm pretty excited. Um, some sort of small craft that you'd like to work on in a group setting, in a coffee house or wherever it is we decide to migrate to next. Um, you can do that. So that's actually one of our really popular events. Mm-hmm. That one always books up really quickly. Yeah, so I would I would recommend checking it out. And I just feel that it's a good chance to explore a new hobby. It is okay if you come to a craft and crab and you discover that you're not crafty. Or, <laughs> but if you're crabby, you'll fit or, right or in. So crabby. It's okay. If you're crabby, we can, you know, talk over our, our knitting if that's the thing that you're into. Or for me, I'm going to be working on some uh, Harry Potter-themed bangle bracelets next Ooh. time. Yeah, so it gives me a chance to actually uh, move beyond my Pinterest board and act instead of just <laughs> pinning things for eternity and wishing that I would actually make something from Pinterest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've just got into Pinterest, and it's <clears throat> it's a time overwhelming. Yeah, it's just yeah. it just I'll sit there and click through stuff, and I'll look down. Oh, that's a whole hour and a half. I've just wasted. <laughs> Let me start doing something else. Wait until you plan a wedding. Just don't that's insane. I don't think I'll have to worry about that. Luckily, but yeah. <laughs> That's uh, that's one of the things Pinterest is. It's it's not. I wouldn't say Pinterest is uh, female because I know a lot of women are on the site, but I don't think it's because there are a lot of other stuff. As as a guy, and especially a geek guy, I was finding like pictures of old action figures. Mm-hmm. I'm like <laughs> pulling these boards in and <laughs> movie posters. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah. I I mean I spend most of my time on either fashion or um, resumes because I'm really good at resumes and cover letters and interview skills. So Hmm. I find things that interest me for that and I pin it to my resume cover letter um, interview board and uh, recipes because I'm pretty sure that's why most people are on Pinterest is for food. Yeah, it seems (laughs) like food. Yeah, there's a lot of recipes up there. There's a lot of duds. uh... Actually, there's a Pinterest fail blog you should check out that's hilarious. Really? Oh, yeah. It's sad. And, and, there's, uh, and there's awesome. another hour and a half of my life. I'm, I'll sit there and try to find this they board show, now. And just they show what it was, what Pinterest suggests it should look like versus the reality. <laughs> that, that'd be kind of funny. See, that's another thing. I could, like I said, I'd be there for an hour and a half just laughing at laughing. other people's misfortunes. It's a good, it's a good break, a good mental break. And then I feel like I shouldn't be laughing at these people's failed crafts, but I do. <laughs> Don't we all laugh at other people's misfortune occasionally? That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's I, cathartic. I laugh when people fall. That's, a, that's something I do. <laughs> well, Not we, really. We are going to take another quick break, and then we'll be back once more with Carolyn and Marissa from Superheroines, etc. And, of course, Nikki, my co-pilot, is here with me as well. Hello. And we'll uh, talk some more geek stuff. If Once again, if you have calls, you have any questions you'd like to call in, you don't have to be related to either one of our guests to call. <laughs> it's 314-969-KTRS or... 888-550-KTRS. Once again, star KTRS from your mobile phone. We'll be right back after these words from Schnars Hardware and Flooring Industry Council. And we are back for our final segment of Geek2Me Radio. Joined this hour by Carolyn and Marissa from Super Heroines Etc., and that is uh, the website, superheroinesetc.org. You can check them out there. I know Carolyn was saying she put a lot of work into that website, so you should definitely go check them out. It's a really good website. Very, uh, You're to be commended for the Thank website. You. Very nice. And uh, talking once more, your next event coming up is? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Comics 101 at 6 p.m. So if they want to join into that, they, there's still plenty of time. They can go to the website to sign up. Definitely. 
Yes, it is at the Fantasy Shop, but I would recommend going to the website and checking availability and updated information first. Okay, so once again, superheroinsetc.org. Check out the website. Uh, if you're uh, interested in anything geek or nerd related, they've probably got an activity for it. Or you can suggest it, it and yes. I, as the uh, event host coordinator, will try my very best to make that happen. Perfect. We get a lot of suggestions from members, and we, we really make our best effort to make those happen for them. See, mm-hmm. that's cool. That's that's neat that you're willing to work uh, so much with everybody, and kind of that's uh, very inclusive. That's wonderful. Thank you. And once again, if you're listening outside the St. Louis area and you'd like to start your own chapter, they can help you with that too. Hit up the website, superheroinsetc.org. So in the last few remaining minutes, ladies, um, we kind of were talking a little bit in the last break. Superheroines, who who are your favorites? Do you have a top five list you can uh, rattle off? I love making lists. <laughs> my specialty, <laughs> and I happen to have a list because I have an idea with notebook with me at all times. I would not. Um, I'm going to classify a superheroine as the same as we would for our group, which is just uh, you know a positive female role um, or just you know a really awesome lady. So um, somebody, something I have on my list is a uh, Leela Taranga from Futurama, who's the pilot. Um, I have Lisa Simpson mm. from The Simpsons, Hermione Granger from Harry Potter, um, Dana Scully from The X Files, and I'd probably say my last one would be Tina Fey. Okay, Tina Fey. I'm surprised because you talked about your uh, you're talking about Buffy the Vampire. Oh no, I'm sorry, that was Carol who was talking about Buffy. <laughs> I was going to say Buffy's not on your list. Actually, I never, I never really got into that. Oh, sh- not yet, not yet. <laughs> oh my! Goodness. I'm gonna put the qualifier on oh. there and say there's so much amazing oh, media that um, I feel like I need to catch up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. I think I think they're on. They they show them constantly. I mm-hmm. think uh, logos and I don't want to say TNT. I it's think. TNT. TNT yeah. also on Netflix. And oh, they are on Netflix. Okay, oh, perfect. See? This yeah. is why this is why we're friends. At least last <laughs> time I watched it, they were on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is why we're friends. I find out about the cool stuff. That's that's why. And do you have a top five? All right. I hope I can get through five because I don't have a list with me. But um, Leslie Nope, probably really high up there. I'm actually doing a Parks and Rec theme wedding. Oh, um, how fun. <laughs> we're trying to get a little Sebastian impersonator. So if anyone <laughs> knows. <laughs> I don't know if I could do Sebastian. I don't know. Um, so Leslie Nope, uh, Elizabeth Bennett, always been a big one for me. Uh, Hermione Granger is. Yeah, definitely been uh, on my list forever. Um, I guess uh, one really obscure one, Thursday Next, which is from uh, Jasper Ford's series, The um, The Air Affair is the first book. Hmm. And uh, I really like Kenzie on Lost Girl. She just kind of has a, a sense of who she is and uh, really takes things in stride, which I, re- I wish I was more like that. Very nice. Uh, I, I, at your panel, they hit you. Wow, suddenly I brain is shut off it's 11 o'clock and i can't speak <laughs> um the panel you had you had the powerpoint presentation with all the different women and there was I, the little murmur throughout the crowd oh when mm-hmm. someone would pop up and they're like ah oh, her you had furiosa was on there yes. uh, you had buffy mm-hmm. um, zoe think, from firefly yeah. Yeah. Uh, mulan i think might have made it onto the mm-hmm. list yeah i think she yeah. was on that i want to say leela was as well from futurama yeah, I, i'm 90 percent sure big futurama fan yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was uh yeah it was a very well put together panel i uh, i enjoyed it and obviously that's why i had you come in the studio because I wanted to continue the conversation and let everyone know about your organization. Thank you. So, uh, Nikki, any questions for our guests before? uh, They've answered everything. (laughs) I mean, just really, really good. Thanks. Really. Thank you. And Nikki will be at your Comics 101 from the you sounds know, of it. I so. may have to check out that Comic Book 101. You're very welcome yeah, to. Anybody's yeah, welcome. Just check out the website first and learn about the details. Yeah. That's all you have to do. Superheroinsetc.org. Make sure to check it out. And if you want any more information... If it's not on the website, there's a contact thing. You can uh, contact them. Anyone's welcome, and feel free to do so. Once again, Carolyn and Marissa, thank you so much for coming in and uh, spending your evening with us. We appreciate all the time. Well, thank you for having us. Yes, thanks. It was great. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. And for those of you who are sticking with us into the next hour, Nikki and I will have our dueling fun facts. We will. We won't? <laughs> We may have to play some extra commercials in the 11 o'clock hour, so if you have any of those requests, you want to call it in right now, uh, we'll get those commercials up. Yes, in the 11 o'clock hour, more to come. Stay with us. This is the Big 550 KTRS.